Hello, I'm John Lord and welcome to my YouTube channel. And what I'm doing today is, I didn't actually mean to do it today, but the gardens are looking so good. So I'm just gonna go through a few of the plants totally at random. And we start off with this, the New Zealand Toto. It's like a pampas grass, except it's from New Zealand and the pampases are in Argentina. Um, it's particularly good as a specimen on the lawn or on for a big area. But be careful, it does set seeds everywhere. And in New Zealand, they pronounce Tai Tai, New Zealand Tai Tai. We have Rosa rubifolia or Rosa glauca. Now this rose is grown for its foliage and it has flowers as well, which are sort of a little bonus, but it's the most amazing shade. And it's very easy to grow and it will grow in with other stuff. And it's for a big garden. Obviously, if you have a small garden and you, you just want one rose, you wouldn't have that rose. Now we go quickly on. Bronze fennel, one of my favorite plants, it's smoky. And across here, we have Rose Kent. Very good carpet rose, Rosa Kent. And beside it we have, look at this. This is something else. And I'm going to, I shouldn't really do this, but I am. That, believe it or not, is one leaf. It's a compound leaf. It's Aurelia. And it is, believe it or not, related to ivy, a Chinese angelica tree. It's really, really nice tree if you have the space and you have the money because it's expensive. Here we are. This is where everything goes. When you have a public garden, everything ends up in here. You don't want to, you don't want to put your camera in there, by the way. And we go around. Cornus Causa China Girl. One of the best of the flowering dogwoods do very well in Ireland. Really, really easy to grow. And they are not flowers. Flowers in the center, they're actually bracts, which are modified leaves, but that's only for the plant nerd. It doesn't matter. Everyone calls them flowers, so that's good enough. Beside it, we have artichoke, and that'll give us another four months of lovely architectural foliage, and we have little artichokes, artichokes on the top of the finish. Now keep going. We have Physocarpus. A very good foliage plant. It's not evergreen, but a good foliage plant, and it's good in heavy, damp soil. And beside it, we have Astrantia. And if we look at it, it's the white Astrantia, you see it? Really, really nice. Related, believe it or not, to the carrot. And Look at this, an interloper. This is a seedling. And the seedling is different, but just as nice in its own way. Now we keep going. What else have we got? This is a mistake. You see a mistake. That's meant to be Calictrum Ellen. And you see the dark, the dark flower spikes and some chap sold me a white version and we have the white one and the dark one and I only want the dark one so what am I going to do? I'm just going to leave it because that's what we have. And behind us, sycamore tree. That is the purple sycamore tree. Nice, much nicer and more subtle than the more common nori maple. And look, it has the lovely helicopter seed heads. Beautiful tree if you have space in the garden. Very subtle. This is a Hypericum. We think it's Hypericum in a dorm. This bloody plant will grow anywhere. It can be a little invasive in that it can seed here and there. We just remove the seedlings. Now it has smallish flowers, quite nice, but very nice berries. And the berries are, well, no, the berries haven't started yet. Oh, there they are. That's the berry in the middle. See the little, in the middle of the flower, the little berry. Now what I do with that is every second year, I get the out LTL chainsaw, the trusty chainsaw, and I cut it to the ground for about two inches. Did it every second year. And if I'm spraying roses, when I occasionally spray roses uh, with Uncle Tom's rose tonic to strengthen the foliage, I spray this as well because they are prone to rust. And that stops that. Eliagnus quicksilver. It flowers, it's not evergreen, and it's a brilliant plant for a windy spot by the sea or anywhere where it has. No shelter. It doesn't like being in shelter. It likes to be out in the wind. And in the spring, it has the most amazingly scented flowers as a bonus. But it's hard to get better silver than that. Now I put this beside it deliberately. Look to give a bit of contrast. 
and I, I sort of think it works. This here, oh, we have two plants here we look at. We look at the Alastomeria first. Now, if you're buying Alastomerias for pots, buy the smaller ones, but for the gardens, buy the medium sized ones. Don't buy the large ones or they flop, buy a medium sized one like this. Now, they, unlike most lily flowers, they are repeat flowering. They will flower continuously now until about November. Now, there's a little knack. When the flower finishes, you take the entire, it's a little early yet, but just to show. Take the entire flower spike and you pull and it comes up from below the ground. And that induces the plant to throw a new one. And beside it we have Cornus causa satomi, which is another dogwood with, I believe, edible fruits, but don't, don't, uh, don't take that from me. But um, it was a little damaged in, with late spring frosts. It's normally better than this, but it's certainly not too bad even as it is. This is um, a form of our native elder, not alder. Alder is alnus and elder is sambuca, because people mix it up. Now this produces elderberries, same as the normal one and you can actually make elderberry wine and elderberry champagne using this one and you get a slight pinkish hue when you make it with, with this particular one. If you can have it, I like it grown as a tall plant, but you can have it in a small garden and you can cut it back hard every year and it'll make it small, uh, much, much richer colored, but with no flowers. And just, if you have a quick look here behind, see that yew hedge? And the paling behind it. When the yew in two years' time, that yew hedge will be over that paling, and we'll have what's known as borrowed landscape. It will look like the area behind the fence and the area on this side of the fence is all the one. Men's easy eye, and I'm just going to do something here. Look, buzz off me. Uh, and what the reason I'm doing this is just to show you the rich variety of flower shapes. That's Sanguis Herb Men's easy eye, and here we have. An aruncus. Now look how different that is. And here we have a daylily. And not finished yet. And here we have an astrantia. And and here we have a rogersia. Look at the amazing variety of different flower shapes and textures and even colors that you can get in a little small area like this there's no end to it it goes on forever gardening that's the thing about gardening once you get into it there's no the horizon is always further away all the time this is behind me is persicaria polymorpha it's sort of it's here two years you can see how well it's grown now it's it's related to the um Japanese knotweed, very closely related to Japanese knotweed, but it doesn't give any trouble. Um, it's, it's a plant for the bigger area, but it gives that lushness and that, that sort of strong structural effect in a big border like this. And then in the winter time, it just dies completely below the ground. It's, we finish here with this rose. It's called uh, uh, Kew Gardens and it's one of uh, David Austin's. Now, Funny thing about this rose, I had a white border and I put this in the white border and it looked terrible because it's not white, it's slightly creamy white. And when you mix creamy white with white, it looks dirty. So it has to be, I put it then with stronger color, much stronger color, and get a much better contrast. So um, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the plants behave themselves and um, next video we do, we will talk a bit more about how we got the plants to grow so well in our gardens. And subscribe to my channel, please. Thank you.